doing? What's up, YouTube? This is uh, Carlos here doing a little review on the Vizio CoStar. Uh, it's going to be kind of an overview. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos on the internet kind of showing a little bit about it, but uh, I didn't really see what I wanted to see when I, before I purchased it. So I'm not going to do an unboxing. Uh, and I mean, I'll show you guys the remote. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but there's the remote, and it does have the quarterly keypad on the back. And uh, when it's in TV mode, it's, it works like this, and the bottom side is deactivated, and when you flip it over, the gyroscope turns off the other side, so that's how that works. Um, the remote is definitely the reason why I got it. Um, well, one of the reasons I, I really wanted to be able to sit and kind of just type and, you know, and, and view content on my TV. Uh, now, I do have a home theater PC, which I have hooked up to my TV. Uh, I use the Xbox Media Center. Uh, but you know, when I'm sitting on the couch and I want to go to the home theater home uh, theater system, I have to get up, go to my computer, turn on Xbox Media Center, um, or I have to you know hit the inputs and grab the Windows uh, Windows remote and then kind of like you know scroll over to Xbox Media Center, turn it on, and and this is something that I've been looking at. You know, I didn't know if I was going to need Google TV because I already had a home theater PC, but I'm still glad I got it because I think I like it. You know, just the, the, the availability of the content faster. Um, I still like my home theater PC, uh, which I use as a regular PC too. So, you know, it's just all in the tech world. Um, one of the things I didn't see was the fact that people that had were doing reviews on these uh, really didn't have no kind of cable or direct TV hooked up. So I do have direct TV hooked up. Um, and, you know, it has the PIP. So you can watch TV in the background. Um, Actually, I'm in Plex right now, but let me back out. Let me get out of Plex and take you guys just to the main menu. Um, now, if you were in the main menu, one, one of the I'll, I'll do I'll tell you a couple of the faults. One of the faults is there's really no home page. I didn't like that. I really would have liked the home screen. Um, whatever's in the back is kind of just like where you were at. You know, as you can see, I'm I'm backing out of stuff here. And there really is no home page. Eventually, if I keep backing out, okay, there's Facebook. There is no home. If I if I hit home, okay, there is actually the home. The only way to get to that home wallpaper that I have there is to back all the way out and to not and to be in pit mode and not have the TV going. So if you didn't have uh, Direct TV hooked up, or you didn't have cable hooked up, you would have a home screen like how I have my Scarface one set up there. So there is finally the home screen. And uh, when you press the Vizio button, it opens and closes, uh, you know, this uh, this tray here, which is not going to let me because I'm in pit mode. So we'll go out of there. And like I said, because this is Direct TV, this is basically my home screen, is my TV. And then when I hit the Vizio button, out comes the little app tray. And, uh, you know, I'll go through a couple of the main ones that people are probably interested in. I mean, there's Facebook. And uh, it's pretty cool. You know, you're sitting on the, you know, sitting on the couch. I mean, would you use this that much? Maybe. Uh, I'm usually sitting on the couch on my phone right there. I probably would check Facebook um, just on my phone. Uh, but, you know, it's there. So you can use it. And uh, scroll through and kind of check out your stuff that you got going on there. So uh, that's Facebook, and I will show you the Google Music. So again, this is just an overview. I'm just going to take you guys through the kind of the stuff that I've been using using it for. Um, I do like this. I actually rarely use my Google Music at home. Uh, but now since it's right there on the TV, I actually will go through, I mean, usually I'm using Google Music on the go. Uh, you know, if you don't know what Google Music is, this is Google's cloud service. So none of this is actually on my hard drive or on the computer. It's on the cloud. But uh, I'm not going to play no music because they'll probably uh, block this video. But uh, that's my music. So we'll go back. I'll take you to the Chrome browser. 
Uh, since we're in the Chrome browser, I will bring up the fact that one of the cool things that I figured out was uh, you can go to YouTube, lean back, and register your phone. Uh, if you go, if you have an Android phone and you ever hit the settings button, I actually, out of all the tech stuff I do, I didn't notice this. It says add a TV, and this is how you would do that. But I'm going to take you guys to The Verge. So another thing that people have been talking about is sticky buttons. It does happen, I'm not going to lie. But it's not something that happens so bad that I'm like, I won't fucking use this uh, system. You know what I mean? Like, I like it. Yeah, once in a while I'll be typing and, and I'll type like, you know, the verge and then like 300 V. Like it'll just do V's across the screen. So the buttons get sticky. But I think that after a while it might get better. Just because it's a new control, possibly. Uh, but there's the verge. And, you know, you can scroll through. And view content. So this is the Chrome browser, which is pretty cool. And then oops. Okay. Uh we do got photos. So another cool thing is that you know, since this is Google Google ecosystem any of the photos that if you have Google Plus and you have instant upload on all your photos are going to be instantly uploaded uh, onto your Google TV so anytime I uh, you know take a picture uh, automatically uploads up to Google and then it's automatically available here at my house on the TV some subs that I was thinking about buying right here Look at those. Look at those, man. Look at that piping. That's, that's nice right there. So we'll get out of there. Uh, you know, Revision 3, Rhapsody. Uh, I have the Unlimited Rhapsody, so I use that. Let's go into Plex. Now, you know, if you guys don't know what Plex is, which you should, you know, if you're watching a video like this, uh, Plex is basically uh, an application that's just like Xbox Media Center, basically. Um, has all my movies. Again, sitting on the TV, I usually go straight into Plex. Uh, you know, the co-star is hooked up to my uh, router, my computer is hooked up to my router, and my hard drive of my movies is hooked up to my computer. So everything is on the uh, network. And, you know, you got all your uh, movies, your information, and stuff like that. And, uh, we'll start a movie here real fast. Let's see. Uh, Friday night. It does come through 1080p. This is, uh, Let's see, uh, H.264 1080p video that's on my hard drive. That didn't work out good. Let's resume that. I actually pressed the wrong button there. So, you know, HD quality. So that was good. That was a plus. All right. Um, let me go into one of the apps that is definitely something that we, we you know, the Google TV side of it, uh, you know, being able to access content, you know, being able to look not only what's on my cable, or excuse me, my direct TV box, but what's on Netflix and Amazon video. So this is the movie and TV queue, and this is going to show movies that are new so here, here's new releases and these are all movies that are either available for me right now through netflix amazon or stuff that's actually on tv um on my direct tv so it's all my content you know all in one place which is pretty cool i actually like this uh because you know it's like you know does this have the ability to actually go into the netflix app yeah but i don't have to do that i can actually watch look at the content straight through this uh, application right here so i don't even have to log into netflix so that's another problem you know with the home theater pc you got to go to your computer put netflix on uh you know and then you know be able to move over to that interface and this is all just through 
the co-star and is done for you. So let's go to shows. The shows is going to be a little more obvious of what's Netflix and what's on. And you can add your favorite shows. I'm sure that probably CNN will come up or something. Or if I haven't added anything yet. Uh, you know, so here's Sons of Anarchy. Obviously, we know that's on. That's probably on TV and on Netflix from previous seasons. But I'm able to just go in and watch what I want to watch when I want to watch it. And also view what's available for me right now on my DirecTV. Uh, the control does control my DirecTV, the TV, and my Pioneer receiver. So I have one remote. And that's pretty cool. I like that a lot. So I don't have to use a lot of remotes anymore. So it's basically a universal remote. And the last thing I'm going to show you, maybe one of the last things, I'm going to go into YouTube. And one of the things I really like about this, and this is something that I've wanted to be able to do a lot, uh, I was using stuff like iMedia on my Android phone to be able to push, uh, you know, Revision 3 and other things to my TV. Uh, but, and another thing that happens with me is I will come home, like after work, I'll watch TV, and then I'll go to bed, and I'll sit on the tablet, and I'll do all my, all my, you know, videos that I watch on YouTube, and I'll just be up forever. So now I just come home and watch my content straight from my TV, and I'm not like at home, you know. I'm not in my bed on my tablet, you know, and I should be sleeping. So it's something that helps me out, and I really like it. And it's and it's coming out in the best render that's available. So you know, if the YouTube video is 1080p, it'll come out in 1080p. 90 seconds on the verge. So that's pretty cool. And back out of that. And then I guess the last thing I'll show you is this is a game. Uh, it does have on life, and I'm not going to show you on life because I really don't like on life. Um, it does have this little remote. Let's see here if I can, if you can see it. I think you can. It has like a little control there. <clears throat> this is actually an app, a game straight from the Play Store, and uh, it's pretty funny. It's actually kind of cheap, <laughs> but. Uh, but it works and you know just going back and forth and this is kind of an example of like the type of uh, games that will be coming out that are just through the application itself that are you know made for the TV it's pretty cool I mean kids love it when they come over I would never sit here and play this and uh, I haven't really tried to sideload any of the games I usually play but that'll all come in time but anyways I just kind of wanted to give an overview uh, of, of Vizio CoStar and, uh, you know, I would say that, oh, one more thing I was going to add was <clears throat> when I, when I bought this, I bought it from eBay cause it was already sold out and I actually paid 140 for it. And I would say that I'm still happy, you know, even though it's $99 on Vizio.com, but even right now I think it's only in pre-order because they sold out so fast. I'm still happy and I'm still, I'm still happy with the purchase, even though I paid 140. So that in itself shows you that for $99 is great. If you don't have direct TV or cable and you're just using it for media, you, if you can get something cheaper like a Roku box, I would suggest just doing that. Um, but if, unless you're in the Google ecosystem and you want to have Google, it's worth it. But because I have you know satellite, I really like it. So this has been my overview of the CoStar by Vizio. And uh, thank you guys for watching.